Welcome to B News Weekly. I'm Phil Gallagher with B News Director Rich Hosford, B News reporters Tad Stefanek and Robert Paris, and Peter Brown with the weather. Thank you for joining us. Two men, one from Burlington with alleged ties to organized crime, were indicted in connection to the 1993 murder of Stephen DeSaro, a South Boston nightclub manager. According to a release from U.S. Attorney's Office in the District of Massachusetts, Frank Cadillac Salemi, a former boss of the New England family of La Cosa Nostra, and his former associate, Paul Wiedek, were charged in an indictment unsealed last week. Francis P. Salemi, 83, and Paul Wiedek, 61, of Burlington, were indicted on one count of murder of a federal witness. On August 10, 2016, Salemi was arrested Pursuant to a criminal complaint, Wiedek was arrested last Friday morning and was scheduled to appear before U.S. District Court the same day. The indictment alleges that on or about May 10, 1993, Salemi and Wiedek murdered DeSauro to prevent him from communicating with federal law enforcement officials about violations of federal laws by Salemi and others. Shortly after the murder, Salemi allegedly transported DeSauro's body to Providence, Rhode Island, where his associates arranged to have it buried in the vicinity of 715 Branch Avenue. In March 2016, DeSaro's remains were recovered by federal authorities behind a mill in Providence. Authorities say DeSaro was murdered after his relationship with Salemi, and Salemi's son became the subject of a federal investigation. Part of that investigation revolved around the operation of a South Boston nightclub known as The Channel. Wiedek was a close associate of Salemi's son at the time, it is alleged. The charge of murder of a federal witness provides for a sentence of death or life in prison, five years of supervised release, and a fine of $250,000. Police are cracking down on violators at Burlington's drinking water supply. Chief Michael Kent reports in a release that the Burlington Police Department, in an effort to improve the quality of life around the Mill Pond Reservoir and conservation area, launched a new set of bicycle patrols to monitor the area from late June through Labor Day weekend. Authorities say Burlington Police charged 14 people, issued three civil citations, and gave numerous warnings to violators in the area of Mill Pond Reservoir this summer, ranging in severity from minors in possession of alcohol to unleashed dogs. The majority of charges and warnings were issued to those swimming in a public water supply, as the Mill Pond Reservoir supplies drinking water to the town of Burlington. Officers conducted 31 bicycle patrols on an overtime basis, each patrol lasting four hours. As patrols increased, officers saw a decrease in both the volume of trash and number of motorized vehicles on the trails, which were the primary complaint of visitors to the conservation area. During their extended patrols, Burlington police also noted that small campfires are a serious concern due to the extended drought and remind residents that these fires are prohibited in conservation areas. <coughs> The Burlington Board of Health is informing residents that West Nile virus has been detected in a mosquito collected in Burlington on August 30th, 2016. Mass Department of Public Health risk level remains at moderate for Burlington, the release states. West Nile virus can infect people of all ages. However, people over the age of 50 are at a higher risk for severe disease, the health department states. It is usually transmitted to humans through the bite of an infected mosquito. Most people infected will have no symptoms. When present, symptoms tend to include fever and flu-like illness. In rare cases, more severe illness can occur. The Board of Health requests that residents inspect their property to ensure that all standing water is removed. Unused buckets and containers, plastic toys, tires, wading pools, etc. should be emptied and water in bird baths should be changed frequently. They also say that during the summer, mosquito larvae can complete their development in water within a week. Residents should take precautions to protect themselves from mosquito bites, applying insect repellent or wearing additional clothing during peak mosquito hours from dusk to dawn and ensuring that all windows and doors have tightly fitting screens. Uh, as we said here, let me just find a place here. The state primary was this week, but all eyes are ready on November 8th when people will vote for their pick for president as well as other more local races. This year, there are a few things Burlington residents need to know about the voting process, and B News Director Rich Hosford has this report to get caught up. Let's have a look. 
This past Thursday was the Massachusetts state primary. Due to a low number of contested races, participation was low, but that is expected to change on November 8th when the state and federal election will be held. During that election, voters will cast ballots for presidential candidates, including former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and businessman Donald Trump, among other third-party candidates. Locally, residents will have a choice between incumbent Democratic State Rep Ken Gordon or Republican challenger Paul Gerard for the 21st Middlesex District seat. November 8th, actually, one of the interesting things is we're going to have a, uh, some new regulations about how and when you can vote. But I think November 8th, um, I'm looking, four years ago we had about 85 percent uh, turnout. I'm looking for a high turnout again. So it'll definitely be a lot more busy, a lot more action, and a lot more activity. In Burlington, voters can cast ballots at the polls on November 8th in the Burlington High School Gymnasium between the hours of 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. As they could in the past, they will also be able to obtain absentee ballots in the town clerk's office and town hall. However, for the first time ever, there is a third way for people to cast their ballots and avoid waiting in line at the polls at the same time. The third way is new this year. Our legislature has passed a law that it will allow for early voting. What early voting is, is the ability to be able to um, come in at some set periods of time and vote just like they would vote on November 8th. Their ballot will be received in, it will not be tabulated, but we will keep a count. And then those ballots are all brought here on November 8th, just like the absentee ballots are, and they're fed into the machines by the election workers. So when can residents cast early ballots? Our early voting hours are going to be um, um, Monday, October 24th, and October 31st from 8.30 to 4.30. On the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of those two weeks, it's going to be from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then on the Friday of that week, it's going to be from 8.30 to 1. And so they'll be able to come in any time, get a ballot, and vote it and then they'll be done and ready for the election on November 8th. As with all state elections, there will be ballot questions voters can weigh in on. These, if passed, often result in immediate changes to state law and can have far-reaching impact. It is important to study them thoroughly, not only because they carry such weight, but because sometimes the wording can be confusing. Um, there are going to be a number of ballot questions. Since the ballot isn't set yet, I'm not quite sure of all of them, but I know that there's going to be the one on charter schools, there may be one on uh, marijuana, medical marijuana use. And so what's going to happen is probably about a, a month and a half before the election, everyone will get that gray and red booklet in their mail. That will go through all of the ballot questions. And one of the things that I always um, challenge people with is to make sure that they really totally read it. Because sometimes the wording may be, you may be voting for the affirmative that is a negative. And so make sure you read through those books. But those will be available also in the clerk's office. We will also have some here the day of the election if people haven't had a chance to read through them yet. And anyone who hasn't registered to vote yet, there is still time. The, they, they can register to vote up until October 19th. And so anyone can come into the office. They can actually also go online right now. If you go to the Secretary of State's website and you have a, Massachusetts, a valid Massachusetts driver's license, you can register online. We get those notifications in our office, and then they'll be on the voter list and ready to vote in no on November 8th. At the polls here in Burlington, on B News Director Rich Hosford. Interesting that we can get 85% out for a November election, but only 15 to 20% for a town-wide election. As said, the state primary last night was a low-attended affair, mostly due to the lack of competitive races. In total, 825 Burlington residents, or 5.3% of eligible voters, cast ballots for the party of their choice. The biggest contested race, which still wasn't a hard campaign, was for the Democratic race for Middlesex County Sheriff. Incumbent Peter Contusion was challenged by Barry Kelleher. Contusion won with 355 votes to Kelleher's 187 in Burlington. In uncontested races on the Democratic ballot, State Senator Ken Donnelly received 480 and State Ken, uh, Representative Ken Gordon received 499. On the Republican side, there was no contested races. Paul Girard, who is challenging Gordon in the November general election, received 234 votes. 
Also, Middlesex Sheriff write-in candidate Angelo Lasavita, who was uh, aiming at garnering 1,000 votes across the district to be on the ballot in November, received 36 votes in Burlington. One more note on the election. As said, the biggest contested race will be between incumbent state rep Ken Gordon of Bedford versus Republican challenger Paul Girard of Burlington for the 21st Middlesex district seat. In order to help voters gain more understanding of the two candidates, the Burlington Area Chamber of Commerce will be holding a candidates forum on Wednesday, October 5, from 6 to 8.30 p.m. at the Massachusetts Hospital Association Conference Center, 500 District Avenue in the district. We at BCAT will also hold a candidates debate, and we'd like to know what you are interested in hearing from them. Send questions to news at bcattv.org, and we'll consider using them in the debate. Good news for truck lovers, lovers of big trucks uh, and other big pieces of equipment and emergency vehicles. Burlington Truck Day is returning after taking a year off. To learn more, B News reporter Robert Paris went to speak with Truck Day organizer Al Fay about this year's event. He files this report. Next Sunday, September 18th, marks the return of a beloved family event. Burlington Truck Day is back. For years, Al Fay was the key organizer for Truck Day. I asked about the absence of last year's event. Well, we just couldn't put it together at the time. A couple of people that helped me, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say uh, Wally DeCoste, and there's a, there's a fellow named Jack Bingle that does all the paperwork and the computer work. He's a computer whiz, which I'm not. He does all of that. And uh, they were on vacation, and uh, Doug Gillingham was on vacation, and all those guys that come back. And you got to do it and do it right, you know, and we tried to pull it together, but uh, we like take a year off, maybe and we'll get it back together again. I wondered if we can expect the same heavy motor vehicle fun we come to expect. Uh, about the same as we've done for so many years. Uh, where else can a little four or five year old boy, or girl, I shouldn't say just boy, because girls the same way, get to sit inside an excavator or a dump truck or a cement mixer or a fire engine. I'll ring that bell on my fire engine that uh, gets plenty of activity that day. And it's a chance to uh, see them up close. And will there be any new surprises? We never really know until Sunday morning. Somebody comes up with a, something new all the time. And, no, basically it'll be the same, but like I said, uh, every now and then we get something a little bit different uh, that's going to be there, you know. And uh, we never know what the uh, all the different, uh, the state police and the Middlesex County Sheriff Department, they come. And we don't know what they bring. And... Uh, so it's, uh, it's always uh, great when they come. They all register in. We come opposite the fire station, and uh, they register there. We've got it down to a science after 18 years. We got it down pretty good. There are many towns and private organizations that contribute to the heavy wagon and haul and fun. I have so many people, it's hard to thank them all, but all our town departments get involved here. I can't say enough about the, the DPW guys. You know, uh, they're all there 100 percent, the recreation department. Uh, the fire department does their thing, you know, and the police. All the departments of town have been very, very good to us and when we do the truck show. And all we ask for is a break in the weather, that we get a decent day that day. It's a good time for uh, folks to get out and support the local town groups, the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, people helping people be here, uh, all the adopter classes, uh, and it's a great, great event. We have uh, dump trucks and tow trucks and fire engines and cranes and all that stuff will be here. And uh, so we just look for a decent day, and we ask the people to come out and support these local groups. Uh, they work so hard, and it's a nice time to pay tribute to them as well. Burlington Truck Day will be held this coming Sunday, September 18th, on the Burlington Common from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., followed by a performance by the rock band Classic Tracks, with repertoire of 50s and 60s classic hits and a few from today. There will also be a spectacular fireworks display at 7.30, drought conditions pending. Get the kids and your friends and family and get on down to the Burlington Common on Sunday, September 18th for the triumphant return of Burlington Truck Day. From the Burlington Town Common, I'm B News reporter Robert Paris. Back to you in the studio. Today we remember two Burlington residents who recently passed after long and amazing lives. First, Regina Short, Burlington's oldest citizen, passed away this week at the age of 102. Regina had seen a lot of change in Burlington during her lifetime. She and her husband, Thomas, moved to town in 1947 and had a farm in the area where the Burlington Mall stands today. For 20 years, Regina sold Studio Girl Cosmetics. She was quite the salesperson and received many awards and incentives, including vacations for her top sales. 
She then worked for over 15 years as the assistant town clerk with, uh, for Burlington with uh, Maud, legendary Maud Graham and Kay McKim. Last year, she was presented with a replica of town's Boston Post cane, which had been found shortly before the ceremony. Traditionally, the cane goes to a community's most senior resident, and this was the first time in years anybody had been recognized with it. You can find her full obituary at www.bcattv.org forward slash bnews. We also remember World War II veteran Adam Smolsky, who was also an engineer and a loving family man who passed away on Thursday, September 1 at the age of 91. Adam grew up in Norwood and graduated from Norwood High. Like many young men of his day, after graduation, he immediately enlisted in the Army to fight for his country in WW2. He was a member of the 328th Infantry Regiment. The 328th landed on Utah Beach in Normandy. As Adam would describe to his family, he and the 328th walked across Europe, seeing considerable action and many casualties as they fought in Montcourt Woods, saw offensive through Lorraine and the Marginal Line and into Germany. On Christmas Day, his regiment, along with many others, fought in one of the major battles of the war, the Battle of the Bulge. They would later continue into Czechoslovakia and stopped uh, uh, and took steps uh, and stopped actually to uh, steps from Berlin to allow the Russians to enter Berlin first. A political decision, obviously. Adam and his fellow soldiers marched for hundreds of miles through the mud, rain, snow, and bitter cold, proudly serving their leader, General George Patton as they triumphantly helped crush the Nazi empire. He was awarded many honors and medals for his service. After the war, he got an engineering degree from Northeastern University, but he continued his support for the U.S. military as a member of the Burlington Legion and founding member and longtime treasurer of the Burlington VFW. You can find his full obituary at www.bcattv.org forward slash bnews. For years, the Burlington High School Music Department has demonstrated a tradition of excellence, from the award-winning marching bands to the elaborate spring musicals and the ensemble melodies of the chorus. This year, the BHS Music Department welcomes the addition of a new choral director, who, including being a talented singer, subscribes to the philosophy that the study of music leads to increased academic performance. BNews reporter Tad Stefanak attended a meet and greet where students and parents met with the BHS new choir conductor. The new school year has Burlington Schools welcoming a host of new instructors, the most musically attuned being the new BHS choral director, Julie Weller. I think one of the passions that I have um, in, in teaching music is um, really derived from the fact that music brings people together in a really meaningful way. It's a time when we come together and make music. We put away our phones, we put away our iPads, and, and we are with the people we're with, creating something beautiful. A graduate of Wachusett Regional High School in Holden, Mrs. Weller earned a degree in music education from the Oberlin Music Observatory in Ohio and holds a master's in education from Fitchburg State University. Born and raised here in, um, in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. but I met an Oregonian, a native Oregonian, so that's what took me out to Oregon initially. But we have a son now, and my son is ready to start the public schools, and he's actually going to be a, a student at the Kickstart Kinder Stars program here, housed at the high school. We were looking at public schools in Massachusetts versus public schools in Oregon, and of course there is no comparison in. The Massachusetts public schools are the best in the nation. And the new BHS choral director practices what she preaches. Typically, most of my performing has been recitals, uh, you know, when I'm not conducting choirs. Um, if I'm singing, I like to sing recitals, art song, popular music, music theater, really any, anything. Um, and I really like to keep that performing element fresh, you know, since I'm asking students to sing all the time, I feel that they should see their teachers kind of practice what they preach. By um, doing recital series every year, it was a good way for me to stay fresh and um, and to keep you know keep my chops up, so to speak, and um, and really hopefully give them a good model. 
the new choral director here at BHS will be literally preaching to the choir and is sure to have the Burlington High School Choir singing a whole new tune. I'm so happy to be here. I, I'm feeling so fortunate. I've had such a gracious welcome from the community, from my colleagues and the wonderful Boosters organizations. Tonight I'm meeting some students finally and, uh, and some of their parents and it is really an honor to serve and to be part of the village that raises the kids here in the great town of Burlington. From the BHS Music Department, I'm B News reporter Tad Stefanak. Back to you in the studio. We go now to B News meteorologist Peter Brown in our weather center for this week's forecast. We'll also check out the community calendar with Ian Cassiola to see what's happening in Burlington. Well, hello everyone. This is Peter Brown with a look at your weather for the upcoming period and I hope you all enjoyed the unofficial end of summer and you had a great Labor Day weekend, but I guess we're back to reality now as we head towards fall, but our temperatures coming up to start our period are going to be anything but fall. Like, look at this. We're going to start off Friday with temperatures in the mid to upper 80s and very humid out there. So looks like our warm streak is going to continue for at least a few more days. That's for sure. As you can see, by the time we get to the end of the period, our highs are only supposed to be in the low 70s and we're going to be well above average. That's for sure. The only thing that really reminds us that fall is on the way is the length of day. That's for sure. You're waking up in the dark and a lot of you are now coming home kind of in the dark. So that's really the only sign of fall. But as we move ahead, I'm going to show you a little bit about our weather coming up. And really, this is almost a continuation of what we've seen all summer long. We're going to see a front come through um, Friday night into Saturday, and that's going to bring with it maybe a chance of some scattered showers and thunderstorms. But again, as we know with this um, past summer, that really hasn't meant much in the way of rain for us. And as you can see, after that front passes us by, look it up into southeast Canada. All sun across the board, so doesn't look like the drought is going to get any help, that's for sure, with all of this dry Canadian air coming into our region. As we move ahead, I'm actually going to show you again. I know we keep looking at this every week, folks, but we really have to keep focusing on the drought because it just keeps getting worse every week. As you can see here, this red column, the extreme drought has expanded not only into the Burlington region, it's all the way up all of the North Shore into Boston and into most of the South Shore now. So unfortunately, even with some of the little bit of rain that we got from what was left from Hermine, we only got about a quarter of an inch and that certainly has not helped our drought really at all, that's for sure. But as we move ahead, I'm going to show you a little bit about our temperatures and the weather coming up for the next seven days. As you can see, starting out the period, looks like we're going to have a couple of clouds on Friday with, again, very warm temperatures in the mid to upper 80s. And we get into Saturday. Look at this. A beautiful day if you're outdoors. Temperatures in the low 80s and very dry out. But again, really no shot of rain. Maybe Sunday we could see a little bit, maybe a shower, an isolated thunderstorm as that front starts to approach us. But then look at this. Going out on Monday into the end of next period all sun except for maybe when we get into Wednesday when we have a little bit of cloud cover but other than that really it doesn't look like we have any big chances of rain coming and we're going to keep our temperatures well above average up to near 80 by even the end of the period as we get into the middle of September so so keep an eye out and I hope we get some rain but I hope you enjoy some of the great weather that we have coming up Hello and welcome to your community calendar. Are you interested in learning about forensic science? On Thursday, September 15th from 7 to 8.30 p.m., the Burlington Public Library will be having an event called CSI Fact and Fiction. Professor Mike Cross, Department Chair of Natural Sciences at North Essex Community College, will be presenting the event. You'll learn the strengths and limitations of modern forensics and have the chance to test your own skills at crime solving. Mike holds a PhD in organic chemistry from the University of Utah, where he specializes in oxidative lesions in DNA and RNA. The event is free. Everyone is welcomed. Light refreshments will be served as well. For more info, visit burlington.org or call 781-270-1690. Next, he was a good little monkey, but he was always curious. On Friday, September 16th at 5.30 p.m., the Barnes & Noble in Burlington is hosting a special event celebrating 75 years of Curious George being curious. This event will include a dinner, cupcake, decorating, and story time. The event is for reservations only. Sign up in the cafe, children's department, or at customer service. 
Everyone is welcomed. For more info, visit barnesandnoble.com or call 781-273-3871. Parents, do your children like superheroes? On Saturday, September 17th at 11 a.m., the Burlington Public Library is hosting an event called Batman Day. Batman and friends from Boston Superheroes will be walking around and posing for pictures. There will be superhero activities for parents and children. Everyone is welcomed. The event is free. For more info, visit burlington.org or call 781-270-1690. This has been your community calendar. I'm Ian Cassiola. Back to you in the studio. Finally this week, in a continued effort to keep the roads safe, the Mass State Police will once again be on the lookout for intoxicated drivers this weekend. According to the State Police, they will hold a sobriety checkpoint somewhere in Middlesex County on Saturday, September 10 to Sunday, September 11th. Superintendent of the Mass State Police, Colonel Richard D. McKeon, said the purpose is to further educate the motoring public and strengthen the public's awareness to the need of detecting and removing those motorists who operate under the influence of alcohol and or drugs from our roadways. Colonel McKeon added that the checkpoint will be operated during varied hours. The selection of vehicles will not be arbitrary. Safety will be assured and any inconveniences to motorists will be minimized with advance notice to reduce fear and anxiety. Okay, that's it from the news desk here at B News Weekly. I'm Phil Gallagher, along with B News Director Rich Hosford, Tad Stefanak, Robert Parris, Peter Brown with the weather, and Ian Castiola with the community calendar. Thank you for joining us.